Hello and welcome. In this video, I will try to explain how to perform an overhead break approach with an ATNC. The idea of the overhead break approach is to allow for the recovery of flights in a higher pace if compared to a standard straight-in approach, and it is the standard recovery procedure used in combat operations. In this video, we will see the phases of the approach and items to pay attention to and proceed to a short demonstration. This video includes all the mandatory calls done on the tower frequency. Those calls are critical to provide the required information to other flights in the area in case the ATC is unmanned in this mission. When ATC is manned, the tower will of course provide all the relevant clearances during the approach. In a standard straight-in approach, the flights inside the traffic managed airspace will be limited in speed and maneuvers. However, in an overhead break approach, the flight will proceed at best speed to the initial point. The initial point is defined approximately 4 to 5 nautical miles before the runway threshold. In the initial point, the flight should be set at a speed of 250 knots, an altitude of 1500 feet above ground while lined up with the runway. If the flight consists of two aircraft, it will approach in an echelon formation with the wingman on the side opposite to that of the brake. The flight then proceeds until approximately over the center of the runway and then commences the brake. The brake is done with throttles down to idle and a 2G turn. Typically, the actual brake turn will be to the opposite side of the control tower, meaning if the control tower is to the north of the runway, the brake will be to the south. For a two-ship flight, the wingman will execute his brake 5 or 10 seconds after the flight lead in order to create a separation between the aircraft during the landing. Once the flight lead starts his break, the flight is essentially separated and each pilot delivers his calls on the tower frequency with his full call sign. The break turn continues until heading is to the downwind leg. When exiting the turn, the speed would be approximately 200 knots. At this point, we throttle back up, deploy air brakes, lower gears and assess the distance to the runway by seeing it between our external station and the tip of the wing. During the downwind leg, we will descend to approximately 800 feet AGL. Once the end of the runway appears behind the trailing edge of the wing, we will commence the turn to the short final. This turn should place us approximately 1 nautical mile short of the runway at an altitude of approximately 300 feet. It is advised to note the angle of attack during the turn and throttle up a little bit to maintain speed and proper descent rate. When landing, each aircraft should maintain his side of the runway just as it was during the echelon formation before the break. This is to deconflict the aircraft while on the runway. The lead aircraft should postpone his braking until he is somewhat further away on the runway to provide more clearance for the wingman to land safely himself. Cobaletti Tower, Beast 1-1, initial for the break, runway 07. Tower, beast 1-1, one, one, downwind, gear 
Objective down and locked. Tower, beast 1-1, one, one, turn in short final, runway 0-7. Altitude, altitude. Tower, beast 1-1, one, one, short final, runway 07.